a, a read. But it, it kind of strikes me um, wh when, I w when I was reading around it, like, wh why is it so hard for executives to anticipate the major shifts that can determine the destiny of their organizations? And for um, strategists and uh, organizational um, teachers, it, it seems to be an enduring puzzle why business leaders often miss these shifts. Look, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I don't, and as Jeff Bezos has said, he said, you know, picking up these trends is not difficult to get talked about a lot and, and there's a lot of evidence. So I think it's much more accepting the implications and then being willing to act on them that's problematic. And that's actually what my next book's about. Um, yes, so I think yeah, it's, it's yeah. an enduring problem that deserves an enduring solution. Um, so so let's say, um, I'll take a specific example. You're at Procter & Gamble and you're in the shaving business and you've had a recipe, right? And mm -hmm. that recipe comes out of what's possible. And in the case of P&G, it was we invest in R&D. That allows us to create better products. We can charge more for those. Uh, we use our armies of, of employees to get these products into our retail channels. Um, and the whole thing is underguarded by hundreds of millions of spend on brand building, mass market, primarily television advertising. And that model worked for decades. Right. And so along comes some upstart that says, hang on, given the digital revolution, I can actually go direct to consumer. I don't need a retail outlet. I don't need mass market advertising. I can reach my consumers on Facebook, which, by the way, this model is also changing now. But, you know, in the early days, you're Procter & Gamble. You have built your career on that old model. You, you, you have the rules of success all sussed out. You know how it's going to lead to your next promotion. You've got strong ecosystem relationship with your retailers. And, you know, Walmart is not going to be too chuffed about you uh, deciding to go direct to consumer and, 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 and. So there are all these forces that lock in an existing successful system. And what an inflection point does is it makes some part of that system either irrelevant or unnecessary or undesirable. And, and when you reach the tipping point, which can often take a super long time, right? I mean, yes. you forget yeah. that, right? Yeah. It does these things. As I said, they feel as though they happen instantly, but they can have been underway for decades. So as a leader in that situation, you know, your incentive is often not to upset the apple cart. You know, your incentive may well be to see, well, let's see if I can ride out this model for three or four more years, and then maybe I'll get the next mm -hmm. promotion, or I'll leave the company, or I'll go do something else. So I think we, we have this mistaken and somewhat Pollyanna idea that, you know, leaders are always incented to do the thing that's best for the long-term health of their companies. That should be the way it is, but it isn't always the way it is. Yeah, but it shows you the power of long-term thinking. And um, every, well, not everybody, but, you know, quite often people want things done really quickly, you know, and, you know, view points are one year, two year, three year. But sometimes you see people with a long-term vision, and it might even be a multi-generational vision. And, uh, and seeing that vision true uh, and perhaps marrying it to the inflection points like there's a great power in that i'd imagine and uh, just to be able to ride across that length of time if the plan is is good